Hey everyone, this is Rob Roy and welcome to the Elliott Elite U.S. Market Update. Not a whole lot going on. Uh, you'll see from the charts kind of a little bit more of what we talked about last week with this uh, rebound in the SPX. Again, that's the uh, S&P 500 U.S. Market uh, Cash Index. And the question becomes on this bounce, where do we go from here? So uh, putting the regular Elliott wave on, you can see we had the wave three. We're right at the 50% wave four correction. All that we've chatted about in the past. So uh, nothing new there. But the key is we're going to take the regular Elliott wave count off and we're going to go into the corrective uh, Elliott wave section, which is the flat zigzags and triangles uh, to try to determine where the market goes from here and quite honestly it's it's pretty easy you listen to all of the uh, financial news networks and everybody's trying to figure out you know are we bouncing all the way back up to the top are we going to test the bottom we're consolidating backing and filling blah 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 you hear all of the different cliches going on but let's just look at the technicals and see what Elliott wave tells us and when we look at this uh, a corrective move up it's very clear to see that we're hovering right at that 61.8 percent fib correction which uh, as i've mentioned in past recordings this is one of the strongest fibonacci levels it is in my opinion the strongest of the fibonacci levels and it makes sense that we're going sideways uh, and just correcting uh, in this level so uh, or consolidating excuse me in this level so what happens from here well, if, if you're trading directionally, uh, the thing to do would be to wait. Let the market tell you what it wants to do next. And the keys would be if the market does bounce up and hits this 78.6% FIB level, now it has to hit it. And this is very important when you're dealing with Fibonacci extensions and retracements. Stuff in the middle, getting close, none of that matters. You have to actually hit the line. So if the market bounces up and touches the 78.6% level, the percentage would be that we are going to go back up and retest the highs. In other words, any potential zigzag to the downside, which uh, would be this being the A wave to the downside, this being the B wave correction with a potential lower C would be nullified. Uh, right now, that's what you would have to look at and think is, uh, is the likely uh, scenario. But we need to wait, and the keys are simple. If we go up and hit the 78.6% level, again, this zigzag to the downside is negated, and the likelihood is that we go back and test the recent highs. However, if we don't take out the 78.6% level, and we come down and we break the next FIB level, which is the 50%, in other words, the market would have to come down break below this 50% level, that would then confirm in Elliott wave uh, trading that we are in the C wave to the downside and we would be looking for the C wave down somewhere around here. But right now we're in limbo. So all we know is that we have a standard correction and the market is trying to figure out what it wants to do from here. We're consolidating between these two FIB levels. I mean, this is very classic stuff as the market tries to figure out what it wants to do. But if you're a directional trader, the smart thing to do right now is wait until the market gives you a signal in order to continue to trade directionally. So far, um, it's been textbook. We've been telling you all this for weeks and months, and nothing has uh, been out of the ordinary from what we've talked about. Uh, let's take a look at the SPY so that we can bring volume into the mix. And as you would expect, volume is lighter than it was on the downward move. But in all honesty, for this sideways correction, having above average volume is a little bit unusual. So we're going through this corrective phase here right between 270 and 275 on the SPY, which is the ETF for the S&P 500, uh, with a little bit higher volume than you would normally see. Usually that would be below average volume uh, in order for uh, uh, that uh, sideways consolidation. Uh, what that means is that this will not likely last very long. The fact that it's a higher volume consolidation uh, normally, historically, means that we're not going to go sideways for a very long period of time. And if you were a sideways trader, that would give you 
pause because normally you might look at this and say, well, gee, you know, I could set up a nice, you know, sideways butterfly right, right in this area and just let the market continue to consolidate right here in the middle of the butterfly. But that higher volume uh, makes it seem like we're not going to do this for, for very long and that next week we might see uh, a move out of this, uh, this tight consolidation that we've been witnessing all this week. Let's look at TNX. We've uh, introduced that as the uh, um, benchmark for the 10-year uh, note interest-wise uh, interest rates. And looking at uh, LA Wave, we're still in the Wave 3. Uh, this is where the Wave 4 would be if we start to pull back. Uh, but uh, that has not uh, occurred as of yet. And looking at the corrective patterns, when we go and just put on uh, a potential extension pattern here that we shared with you last week again we're still right in the middle here and uh, two things could happen here we could go straight up to the 161.8 percent extension or we could come back down test this 100 percent level and then bounce back to the upside it doesn't seem logical um, that we are going to uh, see much of a move lower in interest rates from here. We do have the new Fed chairman speaking this upcoming week. Uh, all eyes will be on uh, Mr. Powell's testimony and see what uh, he has to say. But you wouldn't think that interest rates are going to come anywhere near where they've been in the past. I think the lowest rates are in. Uh, but we could very easily come back and test this previous FIB level there at the 100% before bouncing higher. Again, that would not be uh, abnormal in any way, shape, or form. So, <coughs> again, uh, we'll just wait and see what uh, happens. But that will be telling as far as uh, what the market's going to do. The market thus far has not liked this period of rising interest rates, and uh, a lot of people say that is what triggered the correction. Uh, let's look at uh, volatility right now, and then I'm going to bring a chart of the uh, dollar in. We're going to add a new chart uh, for this week. Uh, looking at the move back down in the VIX, you would expect that. I mean, we're not going to have this crazy volatility at that level forever. Uh, but what we do see here is uh, this area right in here in the 15 area that, uh, as I mentioned, I believe will now become support where it was resistance for a long period of time, years basically, where 15 became um, a ceiling or resistance to the upside. Old resistance becomes new support. We've talked about that. And so, so far, um, we haven't come down to actually test that 15 level, but I would be surprised if we break that 15 level uh, and uh, break it uh, significantly, maybe just short term. To make everybody think, ah, okay, everything's okay. And then we move on from here. Uh, the Bulls and Bears survey from Investors Intelligence has the Bulls dropping again. They've actually dropped below 50%. We haven't seen that for the past two years. But the Bears are still down around 14. So basically what that means is just like last week, we have fewer bullish advisors, but the same low number of bearish advisors. So even though some are less bullish, They've moved into the neutral camp, uh, but we're not getting an increase uh, in bearish advisors at all. And that's not really a good thing if you're really bullish or long the market and you want to see a continued rally. Uh, if you want to see a continued rally, you would like to see the bears start to rise a little bit, uh, increase bearishness so that then we can have uh, enough of a uh, platform to move to the upside. So as I mentioned, I wanted to bring in a new chart this week, which is the U.S. dollar. And that's right, profit source and integrated investor. You can look at currencies as well. And uh, we, we always want to take a look at that. You would think, you know, we've been talking about interest rates. You would think with this move higher in interest rates that that would be supportive of the dollar. And it has been uh, for a bit. So here we have this, uh, this area right in here that's acting as uh, a bit of support. You can clearly see, if you've been following us uh, for the last several weeks, this beautiful zigzag pattern here. And it looks like we've had an extended wave C. So let's, uh, let's do some measurement and see. But uh, clearly, just about as classic of a zigzag pattern. Now remember, zigzags are the corrective 
Elliott wave patterns. And that's in addition to the traditional five wave Elliott, Elliott wave directional patterns that uh, everybody is so used to. So this would be an extended wave C here and we're building some support. So let's look at the Fib extensions and see where we are. So we measure the first move down which is the A, then the correction to the B, and you can see that we're past the 161.8% Fib extension. So uh, the 100% would have been uh, where the C wave completed. So that means that everything went as planned. So we came down here and this, I mean, you can't be any more textbook than this if you learn this LA wave stuff. So we had a straight move down in the C wave. So we had a mono A, a mono B, and a mono C. So we came down to the 100% extension and then we bounced back up to test that level, which is exactly what I was just talking about on the SPY to see, or the SPX, excuse me, to see where we go from here uh, on the uh, uh, S&P 500. So we went back, we tested that previous level, and then we moved down into the extended wave C and we actually have broken through that and we're down here kind of in a no man's land and we've bounced back up and that 161.8% uh, uh, extended C wave and again look how we went sideways here so we consolidated once we got to that level why because it was a support level we're on the downside now so 100% was support we moved back up, tested the previous FIB level, moved down, that became support, we broke that, and now we're just kind of uh, finding our way down, and uh, maybe the dollar overshot itself a little bit to the downside, and now bouncing back, the 161.8% level is now acting as resistance, and if we start to see the dollar rebound significantly from here, then uh, uh, that wouldn't be a positive for the equity market because we're now conditioned over the last several years that uh, economies want a weaker currency and uh, that was never the theory in the past but the new modern theory is that you want a weaker currency. It used to be that you wanted a strong currency but things have changed now so uh, seeing the dollar uh, move back to the upside uh, with exchange rates etc makes it difficult, uh, more difficult on importing, exporting business. And so uh, we want to keep an eye on the dollar now. So again, we're adding that into the mix, but we're not looking at case studies at the moment uh, other than um, we do do some uh, non-directional strangles uh, in one of our uh, portfolios where we send out alerts uh, because that's what we're uh, looking at with this consolidation knowing that we could break one way or the other but from a directional trading standpoint uh, the thing to do right now is stand pat until we get uh, a move out of the markets in one of those two directions and uh, we've got all the supporting evidence to uh, share with you hope you've had a wonderful weekend and we'll be back to talk to you again next week take care everybody